the 20th century. So much has happened in that 100 year span compared to the centuries that went before, it is indeed daunting to even attempt to broadly summarize any of it. While the beginning of the 20th century saw a new, yet old, cosmological paradigm put in place, at least in the halls of academia, that could theoretically provide a convincing new and deceptive pretext for a new wave of rebellious watchers, or some kind of fallen entities to come down to earth and present themselves as aliens. We do have to stop and consider the question of the dimensional veil, the barrier that God does seem to have put in place after the invasion of the Watchers back before the Flood. Could fallen angels once again reveal themselves to humanity, this time as alien saviors, and serve as governors of Satan's earthly kingdom? perhaps. Can demonic spirits, even now, sometimes manifest themselves in the physical realm, inhabiting people, moving objects, even attacking individuals? Yes. But is it also true that this ability for the demonic realm to interface with the physical is still limited? It would seem to be the case, and the Bible does seem to confirm that this barrier will remain in place right up until shortly before Jesus returns, when it will be removed and the spirit of Antichrist will have a period of unprecedented access to the earth and to humanity one last time before he meets his own end. While I certainly do not claim to have all the answers, or to have a perfect understanding of biblical eschatology or end times prophecy, one thing I have come back to again and again through my research over the past few years into cosmology prophecy, current events, the rise of scientism and its roots in occultism, is that somehow quantum physics plays a significant role in this massive age-old agenda of Satan, which the Bible refers to as the Great Deception. Into the 19th and 20th century, atomism eventually became formal modern atomic theory, bringing us all the way into the present day full of string theory and dark matter and large hadron colliders. The atom has long been split with fearsome destructive power or, or energy producing possibility. The existence of this minutely vast quantum reality has been undeniably proven. Or has it? Do the pervasively occult origins of these theories have any remaining significance for us today? Is there some still yet undisclosed spiritual agenda behind all these supposedly innocuous and coincidental connections? Modern occultist Manly P. Hall certainly believed there was a great deal of esoteric significance to atomism and he gave many lectures on the topic. 
Today we increasingly hear theoretical physicists and other materialistic scientists talking about an uncanny amount of similarity between the things modern quantum physics is claiming to discover and the sorts of things found in Kabbalism and other ancient forms of Hermeticism. Through the history of atomism, we can see this familiar trend of an original mystical philosophy gradually and painstakingly hammered into what is supposedly a purely materialistic and scientific knowledge base, which then, ironically enough, winds up coming full circle to where it begins pointing humanity back to that original underlying hermetic belief system. Has humanity effectively been duped into building the machines that will serve as the key to freeing a horde of entities from a dimensional prison? Did fallen angels perhaps begin perpetrating these false cosmological and physical doctrines long ago so that eventually we would believe we were acquiring the knowledge to achieve our own immortality when in reality we were only playing God? And even today, there is still this process of discovery going on. Um, what, we, what we can clearly see in terms of the teachings in the Kabbalah, in the Zohar, is that there is no such thing as death. This is very important teaching. For example, you're driving along in your car and you see a little animal he's been run over, it's roadkill, it's a shame. But in the true lessons of the Kabbalah, that animal is made of atoms which are described in the Kabbalistic texts. And atoms are miniature points of light. This is how they're, they're described. They are particles which you cannot see with your eye, but they are the building blocks of everything in the universe. And that little dead creature, he is made of atoms and those atoms are full of energy. And so the Kabbalistic texts and the tradition really breaks things down into particle theory. And what is really fascinating is that the uh, oral tradition of the Kabbalah teaching uh, you know, from father to son, mother to daughter, this, I suppose, a version of nuclear physics was very strong in Central Eastern Europe, okay? Where do all of the nuclear physicists come from? Hmm. Niels Bohr, Zillard, Albert Einstein, uh, the Oppenheimer brothers, Edward Teller, who invented the hydrogen bomb, if you look at their family histories, they all come from Central Eastern Europe, um, which is the geographical area where the oral tradition of the Kabbalah was its strongest in Europe. Hmm. Um, and I've, I've just written an, a new book that's uh, coming out tomorrow called The Real Dr. Strangeloves. And, you know, it shows that the Kabbalah is now being written into quantum theory. You know, quantum theory with quarks and neutrinos and all these exotic particles traveling at, you know, two thirds of the speed of light that are being discovered in these particle accelerators. If you know about the Kabbalah, which though people like Albert Einstein and Edward Teller definitely knew about the Kabbalah, you can see that it's almost like they're making quantum physics fit the Kabbalah.
is it not a crazy thing to ponder? This idea that practically every single one of us has grown up being taught, being indoctrinated with what is really Babylonian mysticism, which is really what Kabbalah is. Only none of us had any idea because we were all told it was science. I'm a theoretical physicist, and I like to say that I walk in the footsteps of giants like Albert Einstein and Niels Bohr. I'm not a philosopher. However, I am rather dazzled by the fact that many of the basic mysteries that we find in string theory and the theory of everything seem to be mirrored, mirrored in the Zohar and in the Kabbalah. As a scholar, the most amazing thing of all is the degree to which modern astrophysics sounds like a Kabbalistic text. When I first made the correlations between Kabbalah and science, I was stunned. We do know that Isaac Newton had access to certain mystical texts, certain texts of the Kabbalah. Well, the Kabbalistic description of creation is coming from a single little point, from a speck, and of having matter form and time and space form all together at the very beginning. This sounds very much to me like the description of the Big Bang. I couldn't believe that the Kabbalists could derive these truths without really knowing any mathematics or physics. It is certainly true that in string theory, the, the number 10 is the dimension of space-time for supersymmetrical string theories, and 26 for bosonic string theories stand out as a requirement of the mathematics. All the things that could destroy string theory all the things that do destroy every rival theory to string theory, they are all eliminated in precisely 10 and 26 dimensions. These dimensions are magic. We physicists don't know where these dimensions come from. The Zohar says those things. It could have been a lucky guess. I don't know. They knew things about the universe that took us till now to discover. It's rather amazing, this uncanny reflection of some of the most advanced cosmology coming from our satellites, coming from our atom smashers, coming from our blackboards, that are mirrored in the Zohar and ancient Kabbalistic texts. If we get away from the way we usually see, we'll come to the true point that the Kabbalists are telling us, that seems so strange to us. And those scientists who study quantum physics, why do they come to this realization? At that deepest sub-nuclear level of our reality, you and I are literally one, one, one. Because they enter a world that has strange rules. Suddenly, one thing can be in two places. Or time and space and movement can be in another shape. And they come to this same thought. Everything depends on the one who perceives it. And that's why whether you pass through the wall or you don't exists only towards me, but it doesn't exist on its own. And what does towards me mean? It means, according to my vessels, it will be yes or no. You know, I had been studying physics and I knew something about that technology, but Kabbalah as a science was something that never would have even dawned on me. I don't care what you're doing, there is something about this field of way of thinking, of seeing, which can improve anything. And I don't care if you're a Jew, a Muslim, Gentile, Arab, I don't care what you are, I don't care what nationality, I don't care what religion you belong to, Kabbalah will help liberate your mind from any shackles of thought. But if you move forward several generations as you get into the 20th century, really for the past 80 years, um, and, and really right now in our generation, uh, experiments in quantum physics have reignited people's religious or mystical imaginations. Uh, it's almost impossible to overstate the strangeness uh, and the peculiar nature, the astonishing nature of what's been found in quantum physics experiments, say, over the past eight decades. On an atomic scale, scientists are finding that, that 
particles seem not to appear until they're observed. It's suggestive of all kinds of incredible and extraordinary things, and quantum physicists are rightly concerned uh, that New Agers or people like me should not be seizing upon these things to say, aha, look, evidence of everything the Renaissance occultists were interested in. Because quantum physicists themselves don't understand this material. It's the challenge of our age. It's the mystery of our age. The brutal fact is that Aspect's experiment confirms quantum mechanics, and it confirms it in this very peculiar situation. So that I'm obliged to admit that the quantum correlations exist in the world, and if we are to explain them and not just accept them as given, if we are to explain them, we are obliged to invoke something like actions going faster than light from one place to another. It's as if somebody was playing a trick on us. It's as if behind the scenes. Imagine, for example, that you have a, a railway system. We know that the trains cannot go faster than light, but you might, by studying the timetable very carefully, discover that during the night, trains have to be returned to their starting point faster than light. So behind the scenes, extraordinary things are happening which we cannot use personally. And this is a dilemma. I don't think we have a good way of looking at it. It's as if somebody was playing a trick on us. It's as if somebody was playing a trick on us. So if you do understand what divination is and why the Bible flatly forbids it, you understand that it is because essentially it is, is a whole host of practices which involve contacting the, the demonic realm, the fallen angelic realm. And of course, this is what all of occultism really is. But I've been thinking about this a lot lately as I've just been tumbling further and further down the, the rabbit hole of quantum mechanics and quantum physics and concepts like quantum entanglement, which is one of the aspects of quantum physics which a lot of New Agers and occultists and mystics uh, do like to point to as evidence of science vindicating uh, ancient esoteric beliefs and mystical beliefs. <laughs> Much to the chagrin of many, many of the materialistic physicists out there, but nevertheless this tension continues to kind of mount and uh, more and more people are, are looking to quantum physics as this mode by which science and spirituality uh, can be like reconciled so but there's that tension there within the scientific community quote unquote but the more you look into the origins of quantum physics the development of this over the the long term going all the way back to greece and india and ultimately to babylon understanding that atomism is indeed a, an occult teaching it's an occult idea it's a the doctrine of demons, essentially, is from all that I can ascertain, uh, just like evolution and many other teachings, it is a, it, somehow it is very intrinsic to the teachings of pantheism, pantheistic monism and mysticism, and it's filtered down all the way through the millennia and then taking hold again in the West uh, during the Renaissance with the resurgence of alchemy and Kabbalah and Hermeticism, giving way to the scientific revolution and then... And then around the turn of the 20th century, we have Albert Einstein and Niels Bohr and this explosion of knowledge, pardon the pun, uh, in, in nuclear physics and uh, atomic theory, you know, relativity and all that. So if as a concept, this is a demonically seated concept, this is essentially a, a repackaged occult worldview, a magical worldview that has been, you know, made to look refined and polished and empirical, being guided all along. I just found it absolutely incredible to be listening to a uh, figure such as John Bell who, from CERN, who, whose experiments have uh, been one of the, uh, you know, the pivotal physics experiments uh, pertaining to the whole quantum entanglement idea being supposedly proven, and actually hearing him say out of his own mouth, it's as if someone's playing a trick on us. And going back to divination and occultism, which obviously, if you understand occultism, and it involves a great deal of experimentation, uh, an experimenting kind of mindset, obviously, to the mainstream scientists, they wouldn't consider that science. But if we stop and understand that to the occultist or the alchemist, you know, they believe that they are interacting with with cosmic forces or interacting with their own subconscious, or interacting with the 
the all mind of the universe or whatever the the important point of the deception is that the practitioner does not believe that he is just being fooled by demonic entities right regardless of whatever he's doing whether using uh, tarot cards or a ouija board or rune stones sigil magic casting spells doing rituals he's conducting an experiment in which he will get a response right Ho you know, hoping to get a response and and again as christians we understand that that response is a, a physical manifestation from a spiritual being and so thus we do understand that in certain limited ways the demonic realm can interact with the 3d physical universe and manifest um, you know energy essentially um, and the more you understand about all the you know various paranormal things that are ultimately are all demonic deceptions right whether if you understand how uh, the ufo phenomenon uh, people are seeing things in the sky that people are having abduction experiences whatever these are energy manifestations in the physical realm from the spiritual realm uh, people who get into ghost hunting and, and paranormal research you know and they go out and they're actually looking for things like electromagnetic fields and sounds and and so on like physical manifestations of what they believe are uh, deceased spirits or you know psychic impressions of some past event or whatever uh, or you even have things like crop circles uh, or uh, you know uh, government projects where they experiment with quote unquote you know psychic abilities and you know remote viewing and things like this all of these things that are being demonically uh, powered and engineered or, you know demonically guided but the deception works because the humans participating believe in a false conception of what they are dealing with so if we understand all of that put together how crazy is it to stop and ask how difficult it would be for such entities to do things like manipulate a single quote-unquote photon in an experiment or or you know or sub subatomic particles whether it was at CERN or in any of these famous experiments that have led up to CERN such as the extremely famous double slit experiment how difficult would it be for these quote-unquote scientific results to be uh, manipulated by the other side in order to supposedly confirm things like quantum entanglement and non-locality you, know, you know on the quantum realm so that now we have this debate going on now we have this mysticism and new age spirituality enmeshing itself with what was previously called materialistic science and how this atomistic worldview that was spawned by mystical spirituality is now coming full circle uh, I mean, it's hard to see that as a coincidence at all at this point anyways that's my thoughts today science tells us that uh, the essential nature of reality is non local correlation everything is connected to everything else that there's hidden creativity there are quantum leaps of creativity that there's something called the observer effect where intention orchestrates space-time events which we then measure as movement and motion and energy and matter and addressing Sam we can have a personal relationship with this intelligence because we have a consciousness that is part of the sea of consciousness Rumi the great Sufi poet said you're not just a drop in the ocean you're the mighty ocean in the drop and all you have to do is understand the principles of science and understand that you have within you the resources to intuitively grasp this mystery
The research into cosmology also brings with it a host of other peculiar avenues of investigation that come with it. For instance, when something is universally accepted as the theory of gravity is allowed to be questioned, this brings along with it the eventual questioning of many tangential theories which are all predicated upon gravity, such as the entire realm of theoretical physics, atomic theory, and of course, the whole quantum paradigm. At the same time, a good portion of this resurgence of amateur cosmological research seems to repeatedly reveal clues pointing to a vague realization that the cosmos, this entire enclosed system in which we live, actually operates under the influence of what we generically refer to as electromagnetic forces to a far greater degree than what mainstream science would imagine. <laughs>